What's going on guys, welcome back to another cash game review session. Today we have our friend Alex playing 25 Zoom on Pokestars. As always guys, if you enjoy the content, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. You can click the little FTO Bible watermark in the bottom right hand corner. And enjoy the video guys, and I will see you in the next one. So let's see how we get on. So Alex, what kind of ranges do we do we use? What kind of sizes do we use? Going two and a half here. I see the 2.2x. Maybe he goes 2.2x from early position. Ace four suited. Pretty pretty clear race. Uh, so let's go back here. And I just want to see over the hood and see what kind of stats you have. So it looks like VPIP, PFR, I assume aggression factory. What are the last two in green? We've got falter three bat, falter four bat, three bat, four bat. Falter flop C bat, falter turn C bat. Falter river C bat. I don't really like falter river C bat. Kind of unnecessary, I think. Anyway, Ace 4 suited, I think we can call here. Um, this is mainly what I'm doing. So I actually prefer 4-betting, like, off-suit hands. So, like, in position, we kind of want to see a flop with these type of hands, right? Ace 4 suited, less so. So I'd rather see a flop with this hand and just call in position. And I'd rather 4-bet <clears throat> something like King-Queen off or, like, Ace-Jack off where we don't really want to call. So, like... Out of position, we have to be tighter with four bets because they can call a lot and we're out of position, right? In position, we can four bet a, like a bit wider in terms of like what, what hands we want to four bet because they're going to have a tough time out of position. So they're not going to be doing that much calling. So they're going to be doing a lot more jamming or theoretically they should do a lot more jamming. So we can put these ace jack off, king queen off hands in our four bet range in position because we're just trying to ma maximize fold equity. Uh, so here I'm probably just calling. I think literally any of the three is fine. Uh, let's have a look what GTO Wizard does here. So cut off versus small blind. Uh, okay, it's just pure folding. But again, the, this is having some sort of a calling range from the small blind. Um, sizes are pretty similar, to be fair. It's going like 11.5. Uh, so it is just wanting to fold Ace 4 suited. So but I was thinking it was going to be like this, where the EV is going to be similar, right? So I'd imagine that the EV is... I mean, if it's doing it with Ace 5 suited, Ace 4 suited can't be that bad. So literally 4-betting, calling, or folding, I think is fine. I think it's one of those spots where, like, the EV is similar in all spots. So I don't really mind what you do. I think I generally just call, but we take it down anyway. I think that's fine. So let's have a look. I bet you any money as well, you don't use all your fucking labels. Like, so many people have this on stars and just have all their labels. Like, there's no way, um, there's no way you use all these. And even if you do, you're probably going to forget them. So friend, generic, whack, donkey, whale, station. I'm okay with that. Marginal, min, clicker. I mean, I get that, like, I can understand that, but, like, this you should just have as a, a wreck and then note them, right? So you, this is, like, a note. So, like, when they min-click marginal hands, you should just note them. They're a generic wreck, but, yeah. Uh, foth wreck, face, face up. What, what's foth wreck? Forget about that. Aggro wreck, maniac wreck, similar things. Like, I just have, like, oranges, like an agtard. Knit, super knit, reg, good reg, aggro reg, celeb. <laughs> celeb. <laughs> Do I get the celeb tag? Hey, chat, we open, and I think, again, this is this is a spot where you can probably do all three. I think you can call, I think you can fold a, against some opponents, and I think you can 4-bet ace-jack here, blind versus blind. I'm probably leaning towards 4-bet here. Um, let's have a look at what Razor Your Edge wants to do. Blind versus blind here, so it basically, yeah, so it's, it's leaning towards 4-bet with ace-jack off here. Um, calling or 4-betting is absolutely fine. I think against tighter players, I wouldn't hate... Um, wait, we can see that, right? Yeah. I wouldn't hate folding against tighter players. Um, this is using slightly different sizes, so it'll be slightly different. But this one's the pure 4 bet ace jack here, pretty much. It's never folding. It's got a tiny bit of call. Again, you're going to have similar EV between call and... Um, yeah, between call and 4 bet. So I think either is fine. Uh, so now we have a pretty grim spot on the left, depending on the action. Ace king on the right, we're going to open... And I like I like I like a third C bet here, and I like C bet in this kind of board with range. It's pretty disconnected. There's not a lot going on. We can basically bet our full range for small here, and then theoretically we wanted over bet on a lot of turns. Uh, maybe not the six as such because it's kind of better for him. I, I I wouldn't use this half pot size when we're betting on this kind of turn though. Just bet bigger with this kind of hand, especially. We have the nut king. He's gonna call with any worse king here. Like there's no reason for me to bet half pot here. Let's just bet bigger right like especially with a hand like this i'm probably picking between small and big sizes here i'm probably just going to blast with like sets ace king aces 
And then I'll bet small with worse King X and maybe some bluffs as well. Um, but I think we can go bigger. And then definitely want to bet big on the river. Just call in on the left because it's small bet and I think that's standard. Yeah, I don't mind the size. And now we've just missed out on so much value. So let's have a look what villain had. Sevens and he's a station. So yeah, I'd tag him as a station there. I'd also might note that he just checked called three streets. But on the turn with hands like sevens or fives or like four or five suited, he's going to call a lot more than four big blinds, right? So let's say we bet seven big blinds there instead and he calls. So there's basically going to be another six big blinds in the pot. So the pot's going to be 22 instead of 16. And then we could probably bet 19 big blinds, right? Instead of 11. So we've missed out on three plus. We've missed out on like 12 big blinds. That's over a tenth of a buy-in. And yeah, we want to be balanced and stuff in some spots, but like just with hands like this, lower stakes, guys, golden rule of poker. When you've got good hands against fun players, you mainly want to bet and you mainly want to bet big. It's as simple as that. Uh, on the on the left hand side, I am probably bluffing the river. So it goes check, check, and there are now five diamonds. So blind on blind, this is a little bit different because he will have some offsuit hands with a diamond in, but like he's not going to have that many. So like, a lot of three betting hands are going to be like suited, right? And it's kind of hard for him to have two diamonds. Like maybe he's got like seven, eight of diamonds, but like he is, I don't think he's going to have diamonds all that often. And the thing is, if we check here, he's going to bet a lot here because we don't have that many diamonds, right? So like, think about it. The only diamonds he's going to have really is going to be like pocket eights with a diamond. And even that might not see bet on the flop. So I definitely think that bluffing this river is standard because otherwise we lose the part or chop the part. And we can just bet small here. I mean, he should he should probably just bluff that. He should really just bluff that. Hey, it's King. We're going to three bet. Fucking, what are you trying to do here? I don't know what you're going to tag him as here either. Or what, you, what you're planning on doing. Because his play is absolutely fine. It's, it's barely even worth noting. And here's an idea, guys. You know what you can do? You, yeah, there we go. But why have, you, why have you done it now, though, you fucking tit? Why, why have you started it? Why have you started three betting? You started doing it. You started doing this label. And then you go, actually, or oh, maybe I should sit out. Fucking sit out. King eight, we can three bet blind versus blind. So just sit out when you're going to know. Poker's still going to be there in a second, guys. It's still going to be there in a minute. If you need to note someone, just fucking sit out for a second. Especially if you're useless at making notes. Do people not watch my reviews and see how pissed off I get? Or are you just trying to do it to wind me up? There you go. There you fucking go. You just lost out on some EV. What if your ace nine off with aces there? You've just lost out on some EV. Look at that. You tried to raise and you fucking folded Ace-9 off because you were fannying around with a note that's barely even fucking useful. Don't fucking... Don't you tell me to calm the fuck down. You calm the fuck down. Have yourself 10 minutes to go and calm the fuck down. Telling me to calm the fuck down. It's my stream, bro. I'll do what I want. Right, Jacks with 3-bet, which is pretty standard. Button versus big blind. Big blind versus button. Going for a small bet here, I think is fine. This is probably a bottom. I'm just going to bet a third with range on. And if we're doing that, he has to defend a lot of worse hands than Jacks anyway, right? Because he can't just fold. So um, I think this is pretty, pretty good. Uh, the turns, the turns, basically irrelevant. He's got some like ace queen of clubs, ace queen of spades, but like it doesn't really improve him a lot. Uh, it actually is kind of good that like there's, there's now less combos of king queen, which is his like most likely candidate for top pair or his best candidate for top pair. Uh, on the river here, I'm probably just checking. So, like, yeah, we could, like, consider... I would definitely bluff some small pairs here. If I have, like, sevens and I three-bet sevens, I'm always going to bluff it because we have fold equity against potentially queen X, like queen jack suited that floated um, against, like, eights, nines, tens, stuff like that. Jacks for me, it doesn't feel good to bet. It doesn't feel good to check because we're kind of praying he checks back something. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably just checking this. I mean, if you're going to bet, you need to blast, but I think we're just too high up in our range to do it. I, I just probably just don't want to do this. He's just, not, like, he has some ace -X here as well. And, like, he's just not going to, like, any king is just not going to fold. Yeah, I know he doesn't have many kings. I think you just have the best hand often enough here. And when you don't, he's going to call anyway. So if he has ace-queen, he's not folding. If he has, like, ace-ten suited, he's not folding. If he has, like, we block king-jack, like, I don't know, man. I just can't imagine him folding a lot. Like, or I can't imagine him folding a lot when you don't have the best hand already. So... Uh, right, we defend 7-4 suited here, which looks pretty standard. Um, I, I'm just not folding suited gappers, fuck that. So this board, I'm pretty sure we can lead on, and this hand, I think, benefits from a lead quite often. Let's have a goose. Let's fucking have a goose here. This is using a min-raise. 
and seven four suited is basically pure calling versus the min rays okay so it wants to lead like half the time i don't want to talk too much about leading mainly because i think that people will there will be massive differences to being able to lead this flop versus under the gun and lead this flop versus button because there's massive difference in ranges between under the gun's opening range and the button's opening range so versus the button he's gonna he's gonna have more of this like he's gonna have like fours sixes sevens pure this guy might not open fours for example he could have like eight five suited whereas he definitely can't what i will say though is this is an okay hand to lead because this is a body should just check back a fucking shitload on um but if you if you if you don't want to lead that's fine but i think a hand like this makes sense as a lead um but the thing is people probably oversee that as well you'll, you'll get people that'll just blast a third on this board with range which is fucking terrible and if they're doing that then like look at their c bet c bet strat's really good um and then yeah we'll go for the check raise I, I wouldn't even hate calling this hand it's like nah i think we just always want to show raise. uh hello seven uh so i might check this turn i also might just bet and then jam river so it does take out a lot of our value actually it takes out like seven six suited so there's only one combo seven six there's two combos of seven four uh, there's now one combo with sevens uh still the same with sixes and fours so we really don't have that much value so i don't mind blasting the turn here i also don't mind on these brick turns i think on a four i prefer checking because a four like takes out a lot of our value and like we counterfeit with six seven so like on a four i'm probably checking uh the thing is as well when he has flush draws he should be folding to a big bet here because he's obviously dead to these kind of hands so i don't mind checking here just to balance and like check calling and then check jamming uh, most rivers i don't hate betting big with the intention of jamming 100 percent of rivers basically uh, i think either is fine but like i say you know mainly when you're against fun players you want to bet if you if you're against a reg i'm checking here all day if you're against a rack i am betting here all day basically we fold deuces under the gun which i think is fine honestly i could if you were to fold this under the gun i'm okay with it these these hands really don't have much either i would honestly stop opening these so much and i know unless it's seven eight of clubs obviously um but like if you look at the gto wizard under the gun opening ranges it's like just literally marginal like little bits of this at 50 uh razor edge does open these i think it depends on on the games that you play in uh to be honest with you so so this is pure opening all of these from four five suited if you're in softer games less aggressive games i think it's fine so right this is a thing if you're opening this and then you're pure three and you're pure calling to three bat it's probably going to be a losing play overall, genuinely, especially in the lower stakes. So if you're going to do it, I would suggest that, like, yeah, open, like, 25% of the time, and then we pure calls a three bet. So if we open under the gun and then cut off three bets here, this, I think, will pure call those hands because we don't open them very often at all. That's why we're pure calling these because we only open them 20 25% of the time anyway. We're going to pure call to three bets, so we have board coverage. That is honestly the main reason why we do it. 100 big blinds deep they really don't have much ev and that much playability um in a live game when you're full of spanners and you're like three four hundred big blinds deep yeah they're gonna have more ev in 100 big blind cash games they really don't and you always get these kind of dumb spots as well um where we end up just check calling so we're gonna check call here and honestly i think check jam in this turn is actually okay uh, i think check jam in this turn is really good as a kind of mergey hand where it's like okay uh and then just bet fucking huge here like it like it like it like it okay maybe go bigger wouldn't hate a pop bat wouldn't hate wouldn't hate a check and go for the check jam but no nah, i prefer betting bigger actually no I, I don't hate it but if he has like king queen there it's fucking disastrous it's absolutely disastrous if he has king queen plus it's it's just Okay, he's not calling that anyway. Uh, I actually really like his play. I still think that we should go for the big bat here on the river. So I assume you're going for the check raise. Waiting for him to bat miss flush draws. The thing is, like, he's not going to bat, like, miss flush draws a lot. Because they're not, like... So the reason why we should check isn't just necessarily... It is so he can bluff. But I don't think he's going to bluff all that often on this run out, right? And if he does check back, queen jack suited, king queen, ace queen, kings. Which he shouldn't be. It's really fucking disastrous. I, I don't mind the idea of it, but what I prefer as well is that if you have something like pocket fours to check jam, because he can still have some six X, right? You can maybe have six, seven suited and a six suited. We block those kind of hands. So like when I check jam, I'm normally quite polar. I'm going to have absolutely nothing or I'm going to have like 
the nuts basically like a boat or like straight six seven suited for me doesn't in a way it's almost not good enough to check jam is is the way that i'd put it so i i'd prefer just i'd prefer just batting big with this hand i don't hate the idea of a check but you didn't mate again this kind of note in his shit like didn't bluff miss flush draw it's better it's better understanding the, the the action of the hand entirely because on this board he should probably check that turn a fucking hell of a lot with a lot of his range like aces probably wants to check so like it's not really a board he wants to triple this hand i actually really like his check back on the turn and the check back on the river because ace jack is just not really going to be a good bluff like maybe you get specifically sevens and eights and nines to fold that's about it with a diamond so I'm not I wouldn't really like his bluff because we're not gonna do that much folding. So it's not really that useful of a note. I actually like his play though. King Queen here probably sticking in the three bats. Going around this size, I think it's fine. Versus min rays, I'm normally going about six point five. Wouldn't hate going seven because we're deeper. My sizes kind of fluctuate. Cause I cause I play in GG when I play a hundred, I just click the button for percent, and if it's like seven point five, I'm like, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> if it's six point six, I'm like, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> just don't really give a shit. Uh, okay, King Queen. Uh, yeah, let's just go all in. So betting, I prefer betting a bit bigger here. Um, we block some top pairs, I guess. King Jack suited. We got two overs. I might just blast this. I might just bomb the turn and jam the river. It depends on how fruity I'm feeling. I'm probably normally betting this turn with this hand because we can get some ace highs to fold as well. Some like ace high floats, like I don't know, ace ten of hearts. He leads. I guess we have a side call. Kind of grim. I think Colin's fine. <laughs> uh, Queen Jack, yeah, I like the check back. I'm bluffing this river. Right, the problem with this size is that, like, what are you going to bet for this size for value? So when you bet really big on a river, you are polar. And by polar, it means that you're basically, like, you're, like, nuts or nothing. Or, like, you're repping very strong hands. So, like, full houses, flushes. I guess aces and kings with a diamond can bet this size, but you probably don't see it all that often. So I don't even mind just betting a bit smaller, like half pot here. The thing is, if he has any value on the turn that leads for value, he's probably always, always, always check calling this river. What I don't mind about bluffing this hand is we actually solo down in our range. If I have ace king with a diamond here, I'm just going to check back, even though I don't expect to win a lot. Um, if I have like... I don't really have anything worse. This is like the worst hand we want to float on the turn, right? King, queen with a king of diamonds. So this is basically, we can't be any lower down uh, in our range. I, I like the bluff. I wouldn't hate betting a bit smaller because I think he just might go into check call mode on this turn. And when he does, I think we lose. I think against his value, he's going to check call this size. And I think he's going to check call half pot 100% of the time. Like, I think he's going to call the exact same range to those two size bets. So I think we can bet smaller exploitatively if you like to fold out this, the exact same range so i think this is a bit big but i like the fact that you're bluffing it because this is basically the worst hand that we ever have and queen jack here is obviously going to be a check on the left hand side uh, and he falls nice king jack suited we open on the button um nice and deep here as well i'm probably betting big ish on this board so i'm probably going for a bigger bet just because it, there's a bit more connectivity you know we want to bet big with our like value here so we want to bet big with our like ace 10 we want to bet big with aces we want to bet big with threes deuces so i'm probably betting big and checking back a reasonable amount this works as a good bet uh we have two overs in the backdoor flush draw and all backdoor straight draws i saw that he raised and it looked like you were going towards the fold here nah can't be doing this shit i'm afraid cannot be doing this shit um so this will probably be a pure continue and deuce three spade spade club so um big blind is going to check range basically so GTO Wizard, yeah, it mainly picks the big sizes. However, it mainly picks over bet here. When it bets, it wants to bet 1.25 pot. The reason being is that all our value is so good. We have a load of hands that he doesn't, and we also have all the hands that he does, right? So he's got deuces. He's got threes. So do we. What hands does do we have that he doesn't have? Aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, right? And then there's no two pairs really that he should have even 10 3 i don't think he should have so when you're on a board like this the reason that the solver will want to over bet is because not only do we have like range advantage in general we have every hand every good hand that he has and then we have better right it's not like he does not have a single hand that we do not have 
Like he might have some hands that that that, that call preflop that we don't have in this spot. We don't. So that's why we can overbet. I'm probably not choosing an overbet sizing. It's just not really in my flop strategy to overbet. Uh, part of the reason why is that I don't really want to overbet my good hands because people will probably overfold and then I don't want to over bluff by overbetting pot, if that makes sense. So it's kind of hard to see how people react to those hands. So yeah, I'm probably not having an overbet strategy here. So this will skewer things here because we're basically not really choosing the small bet. In any case, let's say we bet small and villain raises, which he's really not doing a lot. And again, we go back to the reason why villain's not raising a lot. It's because he has fuck all on this hand. He doesn't have pocket tens. He's got twos and threes. Basically, their raising range wants to revolve around deuces and threes. So they have to have some random fucking bluffs and shit. But they don't really have any particularly strong hands here. Ace 10. Uh, it's literally the strongest hand they can have, which wants to raise a lot of the time. So let's say you do raise and we have king jack of clubs. We are just going nowhere. I'll tell you that now. King Jack of Clubs, um, even though we don't really have it for this size, it is just pure calling versus this. So, literally pure calling. This is just way too tight. If he makes this fucking huge, I can get it. But we have basically two backdoor nut draws, right? Or second nut draw for the flush draw, but we can still hit like Queen 9, Queen Ace for the nuts and stuff like that, as well as obviously hitting a King or a Jack. So, this is just way too tight here, especially when we're deeper as well. Uh, this looks like a standard call, and obviously we flop a set, but let's have a look here at the EV of this, right? So we open sevens under the gun and middle position three bets. Da -da 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 -da. Under the gun, it's mainly folding sevens. Again, this is basically off of board coverage. The EV of this hand, these hands are just basically zero. So basically these hands have no EV, and even though that whenever I used to be in these spots when I first started playing, I was like, well, obviously we call, we've got sevens, right? You can just fold this and just get away with it. I'm actually folding sevens and eights pure. Uh, probably just continuing nines, and I'm not even happy continuing with nines. Uh, but we flop a set, so it's all good. So just be just be wary of like the EV of these hands, especially if you're playing in pools that don't three bet a lot as well. It's just going to be even more nutted. But in saying that, if you're super passive, you might get away with like being able to just like realize your equity more. So. Like he's just checking back here where he could just bat. Uh, I don't mind checking here. Because he's going to have like ace king a lot and he's going to have some jack x a lot. I don't mind check calling. I don't mind check raising. Problem is here is like we basically have no bluffs. Like what bluffs here? Eights with a heart should but just won't. Like we don't really have any one pair hands. Now this is much better to check jam on. Um, I don't mind this. He's going to have a real hard time with ace king with a heart which is probably his most likely holding. But I'd probably go a bit smaller because you will see players fold Ace King with a heart. I'm 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 not even thinking about Ace King with a heart here. It goes in the bin. So I might bet a bit smaller in this case. Now I know what I've been saying, which is like, yeah, just bet big when you've got good hands. But like think about this board, how wet it is. Like, so when we're betting big here, we are polar, obviously, but it's so hard for us to have bluffs, and we have like fucking so many flushes, so many full houses. Like, if he's got a brain, he can easily fold Ace King here. Because what are we going to bluff? Actually, think of a bluff, chat. Pocket eights with the eight of hearts. How many of you are going to make that bluff? And don't even lie and say me, because you're just fucking not. Maybe range jam if you're still in the chat, but that's because he'll just fucking bluff every single hand he's got. We basically don't have any offsuit combos of hearts. Like, we just don't. And if we did, it's going to have a pair with an ace or a queen. So, just no one's bluffing here. To be honest, I'm not bluffing this side of the river for this size, exactly. So when he tanks this long and he's got ace king with the ace of hearts, he just goes, okay, he's got no bluffs. I beat no value. Fold. Not even close. You could fold jack x here. You could fold jack 10 suited here. This is a bit loose, this ace 6 suited, but I don't mind it. Uh, okay, don't hate checking back the slot. Just be aware here that, like, my guess is that everybody sees this and like, oh, flush draw got a bet. But, like, we, we really don't have to bat this hand. We can check, and we can play a turn. And that keeps us disguised when we hit the nut flush draw. Um, he can bluff some random shit on the turn, like 8-9 of hearts or whatever. Uh, so we can check this back. Don't always be worried. Don't 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 feel as though you have to see about this hand. Turn a flush, ding, 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 ding. Bat really big, jam rivet. And if he's got queen jack, good luck to him. Yep, like it. Um, the good thing about having a six is that if he's got a better hand, this is going to be so fucking stupid, by the way, because just from what you've said in the chat, 
Um, so the, the good thing about having the six here is that we unblock a lot of the flushes. Let's say we had ace king of diamonds. We then would obviously, we'd block like king x of diamonds, like king nine, king 10, king eight of diamonds, if it's a bit fishy. Um, like ace 10 of diamonds would block nine, 10, king 10, 10, eight of diamonds. Yeah, uh, put the money in. What the fuck are you doing? Like, what is he doing? Cooler. Don't worry about it. Tag him as a net, I guess. I guess he just knew you had the nut flush. That, that's a good idea. The thing is, right, so when he fucking does this, the reason why this is so bad is because if we have a bluff, we then have to fold. We call with the nuts, but the problem is, the thing is, it's not like there's going to be that many rivers that slow down the action for us. Yeah, it's going to suck if it comes another diamond and we bat and get jammed on. And it's going to suck for him if it comes a deuce or a jack. But, like, most rivers, he's, he can just check call the turn and then check jam the river and it goes in. The fuck is that? Tag him as a nit. Call him a disgrace in the chat. Good to see you folding here. Uh, the So, against this big size, 10 jacks becomes a fold. Uh, it's actually basically marginal as shit anyway. Because he's probably a fun player, I wouldn't hate a call, but it is really fucking thin, so. Ace King, top two. So probably I would imagine we want to be betting bigger when we bet here. Blind versus blind, if I bet the flop, I tend to bet bigger than a third, like always. I, I literally don't go any smaller than half pot because um, we want to do a lot of check-in and my betting range becomes a bit stronger and I want to maximize fold equity if I'm bluffing and I also want to maximize... I think people kind of overflow, so I, I basically just end up betting bigger and betting less often. Uh, I don't mind going for the chat raise here, trying to get as much money in as we can in. I don't like this with the ace-queen. This is basically, I very, very rarely call ace-queen off out of position. I basically either 4 battle fold, and I think you do well to 4 battle fold. I think, especially at a lower rake structure, I think calling is the worst option here. Uh, so I really don't like this brief lot. Uh, now we're kind of in a weird spot with Ace Queen. I guess we just call down. Yeah, I don't hate jamming turn. So we do this with some hands. Like, even though that, like... So when we jam turn, it means we kind of want to call down with a hand like this, right? Because the idea of it is if we if we jam, he's going to fold a lot of his bluffs. So we just want to call and keep those bluffs in, right? That's the idea of calling when we have a hand like this because he's basically just going to fold a lot of his bluffs. On a board like this, we have such bad clarity on the river a king, a, a jack, a 10, a spade, an 8, a 6. All those are really bad cards. Solvers sometimes want to jam here because if it comes a brick anyway, we're just paying versus the stronger hands. Um, and we end up just potentially losing to some, you know, random gutters or like whatever that can just multi-barrel this. Like even if we defend from king 10 of diamonds, it's not the end of the world. So jamming is definitely a thing here. I wouldn't have got into the spot because I would have folded off 4-bet pre. Just don't get into the habit of jamming in these spots when you've got a top pair because the idea is that if you can't get called by any worse hands when you jam, you shouldn't really be jamming. He should still be calling king-queen suited, um, potentially queen-jack suited if he bets, uh, maybe hands like 10-jack of spades. If you get to a point where like he's only going to call better hands, then just don't be jamming in these spots is basically the, the one line of advice I'd give. Mate, I'm so scared to show my mom and dad the tattoo. Probably a board, theoretically, we want to do a shitload of checking on. Check raise would be a bit aggressive. Yeah, I think I'd check raise like king four of clubs and stuff like that. Uh, I'm shit blind versus blind here. I'm probably just fucking checking. I don't raise too much blind versus blind now either, just because I'm so bad at it that I can't be asked playing out the small blind. So my range is actually tighter. Um, and then just check in river and hope he checks back. Uh, turn, I think we have a pretty clear call here. Ding, ding, fucking ding. Well, the best part, uh, we are going extremely large. As long as you go at least 30 big blinds here, do what you want. Go all in if you want. So against this size, this size is basically polar, right? He's going to have extremely strong hands or bluffs. He can't have, or shouldn't, I should say, have queen jack or like jack eight or fucking like even like 9, 10, he shouldn't have. So he should basically have like 7, 8, king, queen for straights. Um, queen, 8, or like flushes. When we have the nut flush and a low card, we then like unblock all of the jack x of clubs, queen x, king x of clubs. So this for me, I'm basically trying to get paid by a flush. So I'm just fucking jamming. No, I'm not raising the turn basically ever with ace 5 of clubs. Maybe on occasions, but I'd much rather do it when we block some strong hands. Ace 8 of clubs, where we now t we have an open ender and we block 7, 8, and queen 8. 
ace queen of clubs even though we'll probably see better just because we block the nuts and uh, we have more equity as well so if we're gonna bluff the turn just make it better bluffs i think this is fine honestly i'm probably just jamming here yeah i'm just fucking going all in at these stakes i think this is absolutely fine and he folds anyway hello i like this i like this one here this is nice so I was worried before because when you when you folded the um, the king jack of clubs, I was worried that you were going to be too tight in these spots with marginal hands, marginal bluff hands. So uh, we talk about like best bluffs on the flop, like best bluffs are on the flop and turn are hands that have a lot of equity but don't really have a lot of showdown. So your best example for a bluff on this flop would be jack nine of diamonds. You've got jack high, but you've got fucking all of the outs, right? You've got an open ended straight flush draw, king jack of diamonds as well, but we're going to three bet that quite often, pray. Then you start to go to hands like King Jack and Jack Nine of Hearts. But then this kind of hand works well as well. So we have a nut shot. So King gives us the nuts. We have the Ace of Diamonds, meaning we block some continues like Ace X of Diamonds. We also block Aces, Ace Queen, even Ace Ten, block Queen Jack. This makes a pretty good bluff because we block some of his continuing range and we have a gut shot and we have the backdoor nut flush draw. Um, I wouldn't hate calling against a small size, but I'm a big fan of this race. It's good to see that you do it. You ain't no pussy. Nut shot, it's just a great turn. Um, and then if we're going to fire, I don't mind firing and we go big. I think this is okay. And then we just go batshit on a diamond and probably give up on bricks. I might randomize this. <laughs> Check half the time and pot the other half. We have a little bit of showdown. He can have jack nine, king jack. He can have jack x of diamonds. We block some two pairs now like Queen Jack. He should never have Ace King because we have the Ace of Diamonds. He should definitely fold Ace King on the turn. Okay, check, check, anyone. Um, I'm literally mixing between pot uh, or overbet. Uh, no, I'm, I'm mixing between pot and um, and check. And I think checking's fine. Really weird river. It's so funny because there's so many rivers. That, like most rivers, I know what I'm doing, right? If it's a brick, I'm just giving up. If it's a diamond, I'm blasting. If it's a king, I'm blasting. If it's a nine, I'm blasting. And I know what I'm doing on basically every single river apart from that one. <laughs> like, and I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Now what? Don't I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't really bother about incorporating like 10% bets into your thing, even though solvers have a lot of 10% bets and shit. I just wouldn't bother with it. Hello, Mr. Perry. Hello, Justin. He's playing pretty fucking well. King Jack, basically best river ever. And this is why like 10% can be pretty good because you can get called by these hands. And I guess it's a card where like we never have Ace King. He probably shouldn't have it, but. I don't know. I think it gets too weird when you incorporate these sizes. So I'm probably just checking. I think. I think. I think you played that one fine. I think you played that. I think you played that one fucking well. I think you played it really well. Something I will say to you, Alex, and anybody else that sends in these sessions and watches these sessions, playing a session well is all well and good. Playing in a session to send to me and playing good is easy enough if you know what you're doing in poker because you're going to concentrate really hard when you play this session to send in to me because if you don't, I'm going to shout at you and you're going to look like a fucking idiot on Switch, right? So when people send in a session, they're going to play their best. If you end up playing and you're not playing like this, you will end up losing money. You need to stay focused in poker because it's a mentally very taxing game and you need to be, when you're learning things and you're still improving, you need to be very, very focused to implement the things that you are currently learning, right? Unless you have them learn like ranges and you know them like the back of your hand, right? And they're in your unconscious competence, you're not going to be able to produce all of this like information and implement it into the game. So you need to be really focused. So Alex, you played really well in this session. If you end up playing tonight and like half ass it, like you're watching something in the background or you're tired or you're not focused or whatever, you could end up losing at these stakes, even though I've just said you play really fucking well. So make sure, guys, you stay focused. Why I always say play one table if you're not sure. Make sure you stay focused. I can't fucking tell you how important it is, and people just fucking don't know it. Jack-Jack is going to be a tree bet. The, the problem with this session is you haven't had really any really grim spots where, like, I've seen if you've, like, completely butchered it. You know, you've got a lot of these kind of like flopping top set I, I like the bat size even blocking top set i wouldn't hate a check there's still a lot that continues i'm gonna do a lot of checking on turn either fine here i don't mind ripping because when he makes it that size in position he's probably not folding so i think that we can probably rip but i think calling's also fine 
Um, and then obviously just check snap turn if he jams. Uh, I'm checking here always. I, I would jam aces. I would jam kings with no club. I'm checking here because we block the top pair. Like sevens, eights, easy jam, 5x, easy jam. Ace is no club, easy jam, but like I'm probably like. Uh, no, ace is with a club, sorry, easy jam. And he snaps with. Holy fucking shit, bro. <sighs> Holy shit, what a run out, you lucky, lucky boy. And this is why that like we can jam the flop, by the way, because like when somebody does this in position, that they just have like nut flush draws or combo draws, like. It's only against specific spazzy opponents that you will see somebody make it this size in position on a board like this and then fold. So because that we have bad clarity on certain um, cards, not so much that, but like, let's say he even has like a set and then the turn comes like the fucking 10 of, uh, not that he's going to have a set, the 10 of clubs, then it's just really awkward. And it's more so the fact that when this bricks out, we want that 10 high. We want that EV from 10 high. Like he could just check the turn as well. Uh, like if it's a brick. I don't know why I check back turn. I, I love the check back. I love the check back. The, the, the stack to pot is one, so you can get the money in real easy, and you want to just balance when you have the nuts. Because then the board breaks out, and then it's not like you only have missed flush rows or like one pairs. Um, but yeah, I, I much prefer check on the river as well, because anything he calls with is probably going to jam himself, right? That's the thing. If he's got sevens, if he's got fives, if he's got eights, if he's got nine, ten suited, he's probably going to call anyway. But like, what about like ace nine of um, clubs? Like, it's just not going to call, right? You, you might as well give him a little bit of room with those kind of hands. So it goes in against any of his value anyway. So I think I prefer checking the uh, the turn. The river, sorry. Fours, I guess a little bit deeper. I'm okay with calling. Again, it's a zero EV hand. We don't want to call this all the time. <sighs> probably check raise. Okay. Pro I'm probably betting this turn because we want we actually want to charge, like, it, it, so it's not necessarily about denying equity to ace king or whatever but like we're so protected on this board we can have all the sets he basically can't um it's unlikely he's gonna have sets and we've got all the two pairs as well which i guess he has but this board's really good for us um i'm just betting small here because if he wants to call with ace king i want to i want to let him fucking pay and because i have so many good hands and i'm gonna bet the same with the good hands i'm, I'm super balanced that he can't just raise me off like pocket fours uh, yeah, we probably could lead the flop, but I'm not going to talk about leading the flop. Um, and then betting the river. Uh, small or big is fine. I don't mind going big in case he has overpairs. Like, Ace-King is just going to snap fold to this size. Again, just I'd think about more what you're trying to target on the river. So, like, if he's checked back to the river with an overpair, he's going to call a big bet, right? He's also going to call a small bet. If he's got Ace-King, he's going to fold to a big bet, and he's going to fold to a small bet, right? So, like, against his Ace-Highs, he's folding any size against with his overpairs he's probably calling most sizes so we may as well just try and target the stronger part of his range even though he's just going to fold a lot we're gonna what the fuck has happened here why do people suck off king queen off what the fuck are you doing calling king queen off to a three bet well let's use a big size so it's pure fold no zero so many people do this only be called because he's a rec player. So what do you think, Alex? If he's a recreational, what do you think he's going to do in terms of three betting? Do we have a lot of hands on him? No, we have 45. What do you think recreationals do? Do you think they three bet bluff more? Or do you think they three bet bluff less? Do you think they want to three bet bluff with a lot of the hands that want to take flops? Probably has a tighter range. If he's got a tighter range, what happens to King Queen off? It becomes even worse. Messi, Maz, you, you, you're basically missing the whole point of GTO. The idea is to play close to it so you're unexploitable. Or, okay, we don't have to learn GTO, but, like, have a f solid strategy, a solid foundation. Where do you get that solid strategy and foundation from? How do you get it? Do you just make it up and just think, I'm going to do this because it's good? Like, where do you get that solid foundation from? Versus, shut up, versus... Obviously, it'll be closer versus nine bigs, but, like, this is supposed to be 13, and this is at fucking 500 NL rake, like... Just fucking put it in the bin. It's King Queen off. Anyway, flop top two. Ray's got it in. No problem. Ace is three bet. Just raise here. Uh, you can basically click it. No, just raise. So many bad turns. 
And again, he's going to have a strong range that just wants to continue. Aces, ace, king, jacks. It's going to be in a weird spot. Fucking ace, queen that might just call you down. As played, bet small, jam river. Um, we don't need to go this size. Why does nobody pay attention to the SPR? Right, if you bet half pot here and he calls, now look at it. Look at the fucking SPR here. We can just bet smaller and keep more hands in. Nice river. Now we have to check. There you go. Missed out on fucking 50 big blinds because you didn't raise the flop. And this is the problem. So people do things like this. They go, I'm going to call a bad hand because I'm in position against a fun player. This guy's a fun player, so I'm going to call wider. And then they fucking miss out on half a stack. You missed out on half a stack. You played badly pre-flop, right? Because you're like, oh, I can use this as an excuse. I can use it. No, no, no. Raise the fucking flop, Alex. You've used it as an excuse that he's a recreational to call a bad hand. So you've made a bad play. And then when he's bet, the idea of playing against a recreational, right? is that he's going to start overcalling and put more money in the pot. So why are we not raising top two on a wet board? An ace, a jack, a nine all absolutely kill our action slash give us the worst hand, right? Even like a king ruins our action against aces. A queen ruins our action against aces. A ten puts us in a fucking really weird spot. So many bad turns. If you're going to make a bad call because you think, oh, this guy's going to be splashy and pay us off more, raise this flop. He's always going to get it in with aces and ace king. He might get it in with something like queen jack or jacks. You never know. We want to get it in. <clears throat> just <clears throat> take your time here take your time here before you start snap calling I think this is maybe a hand we could theoretically 3-bat but like then you just end up against, against sets just just take your time before you snap call her. just just chill uh, 4 basically just fucking takes out most of his value he should probably check range on this turn or close to range what are you doing over betting? Just jam. Surely there's no way he has a better hand here. I, I, I'm pretty sure, right, we should just jam here because Jax has bad clarity. Uh, my guess is he, he just has to have like 10-8 of diamonds or 5-6 of diamonds or 8-6 of diamonds. Just just jam this turn. There, surely there's no way in fucking hell he's got value. Uh, that's really weird. But there's just so many weird rivers. A bit of a loose fucking three bet here. But you can't even have ten jack of diamonds. He's probably just got five, six of diamonds. I really want to call. I really want to see his hand. Don't fall. Call so I can see his hand. Fuck you. Just jam the turn. Like, what does he have to overbet here for value? Like, he doesn't need to overbet here to, to get the SPR down to, like, a reasonable size to jam river. So this is just going to be so bluffy, like, so often. It's basically just always like combo draws, like 10 8 suited, 5 6 suited. This is really weird with 10 jack. With, when we have jacks with the jack of diamonds, we're probably just not supposed to fold. Maybe he's massively overplaying 9 7. Maybe he's. Maybe he's jamming 10 8 and 8 6 on the river. Uh, I, I think this just has to be a call. We actually block like his strongest hands, other than boats, which really shouldn't overbet. This is just fucking weird. I really want to see what his hand is. I'm really annoyed that you folded. Uh, did we go for the small size? Let's say we're about half pot. Uh, raise. We might even three bet jacks, you know. It wants to three bet a frequency. Call. Turn comes with four diamonds. Oh my god, it does have overbets. Right, anyway, so apparently it overbets. Um, and Jax is literally fucking indifferent three ways. Um, having the Jack of Diamonds is apparently bad on the turn. Um, but once we call, if we do call and it's the an offsuit 8 uh, versus Jam, we're going to be calling Jacks with the Jack of Diamonds, I would guess. We are, we're actually PR calling Jacks on the river. Anyway, um, maybe this guy's solid there. Maybe he's a solid rag that he overbets there. Maybe not because I think the size in, so what does he Jam river for? 90% part. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe this guy's fucking playing GTO. Maybe he's playing, uh, maybe he's RTA. It's possible GTO Wizard has mistakes. Define mistakes. How can it have mistakes? It plays against itself to get to equilibrium. It couldn't possibly have a mistake against itself. It's solved to get to an equilibrium, to get to zero. It can't have mistakes against itself. Define a mistake. All right, so that is the end of the session, boys and girls. So, Alex. I think you played. Uh, I think you played pretty well overall. I think you're pretty solid. I think there's like marginal mistakes, and like some what I would consider non-optimal sizes.
So, like, some of it showed a bit of a lack of understanding with, like, your, your big bets with sevens, your over bet with sixes, your jam with jacks. I think just thinking a bit more and actually considering what you're going to get called by and, and taking a bit more time on, 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 on rivers especially is going to be uh, going to be better for you. But, yeah, I, there's no doubt in my mind you'll beat 25 and L. I, I, I've not seen any spots where, like, I, at least when, with the thinner bluffs, the ace jack or even that ace seven with the ace of clubs, I think I know where you're going with it, where you then have a blocker to... To, to 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 bet for like the nut flush draw and stuff like that so like you you you're, even your thinner bluffs i think have some merit to them because you're i think you understand combos of hands and you, you're using the correct combos of hands to start bluffing with <laughs>